The Denver Nuggets' distressing roster contrast is a problem, and it will inevitably have its effect into the near future. As you'll find out, Denver has made an impact on personally denting my reputation as a flame-throwing prediction artist. In terms of Denver's roster contrast, today we'll cover the fact that while Jokic and Murray are both humble on the surface level, evaluating their auras in further detail leads to the proclamation that a certain to himself Serbian is the one who's actually down to earth, while UFC champion Alex Volkanovski's right-hand Canadian provides a contrasting killer mentality that keeps the locker room balanced out. During the finals, Jokic was asked about the locker room leadership and gave all the credit to the All heads for the vibes peaking when it mattered most. Do you ever give a speech today or during the playoff, do you ever speak to the team like a locker room speech? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, we have, we have veterans that are doing a really good job and they're really uh, pointing the, the, the main things and they're, if you listen to them, it's really smart what they're saying. Stay tuned to see why repeating as champs may be a real possibility, why Jokic and Murray's on-court contrast is just as dangerous as it is off of it, how their newest young killer fits into this equation, and more that you can't miss. Right quick, just 14.6% of you are subscribed, so please subscribe, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and for a follow back, follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. As you may know, the champs receive their fair share of respect on this channel every year. However, in some years, my hot takes and predictions age poorly. In 2022, I predicted the Celtics would make the finals before the playoffs began. That came to fruition, but after they made the conference finals, I predicted a Celtics championship, and they lost in six to the Warriors two rounds later. With that said, Prior to Curry, Green, and Thompson winning their fourth title in eight years, Golden State was the main topic of conversation on this channel throughout the 21-22 season. For example, from August 20th, 2021 up until June 17th, 2022, when they won the title, 47 different Warrior videos were posted. Looking back at the 2021 season, and albeit in a time when I was posting less, the Bucks became a main team on this channel, culminating in a prediction stating Milwaukee would win the championship after the second round of the playoffs that came to fruition. Looking back at the 1920 season, on March 5th of 2020, I posted a video titled Why the Lakers are Built for the Finals. They would prove that take to be true, winning the bubble championship a few months later. And finally, the first season where predictions of the title winner were made on this channel, the 1819 season, saw a video titled Why the Raptors are Finally Built for the NBA Finals get posted on April 4th of 2019. Big ups to my hometown squad for getting it done four years ago. Reason for stating all that is because the 2023 Nuggets didn't receive nearly as much respect as those aforementioned four champions in the Raptors, Lakers, Bucks, and Warriors. I did make three Nuggets videos in the span of under a month during this season from this past January 6th up until February 3rd, but I didn't post about Denver again after that until May 12th. Conversely, the Lakers, from the span of February 3rd to May 12th, received 17 videos from this channel. For the record, from May 12th up until this current date of July 18th, Denver has received 20 uploads from this channel, not including this one in addition to Jokic and Murray videos, so I've done my best to make up for the lack of Denver respect, but when it was time to make bold predictions, I didn't come through. I was admittedly off in my prediction game this year, as I even tried to claim the Lakers would come back from an 0-2 deficit against the Nuggets in the conference finals, yikes. While Jokic is usually to himself, maybe based off the amount of Laker videos from this channel in 2023 post-trade deadline, Bruce Brown just noted on Theo Pinson's podcast that Joker was desperate to destroy LA. I think that series for us was like more personal than any other series. Clearly, don't know why. It clearly, but like it like was like, y'all we wanted that neck. smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all wanted and all that we smoke. We was talking that sh Everybody. Nicole, I've never seen Nicole at, like speak on the court. He, was he wasn't shit. talking shit, but he was like into the game. Yeah, like like he wasn't playing no games. He's bro. playing no games. Bro, like, he, like he has something to prove, and he's the best player in the world. To add to the Nuggets' motivation, the storyline after Denver took a 1-0 lead over the Lakers in the conference finals was about Denver having no answer for the Rui adjustment. Hachimura had switched on to Jokic, and people thought the Nuggets would have no answer. Responding to silence every doubter and hater, people were questioning what this tweet last night from Jamal Murray meant. It may have been responding to keeping doubters like yours truly under the radar as opposed to putting them in the limelight, as my views haven't been good as of late, and I'll accept the L. 
Some years you can predict the champion, and some years you fail. Regardless of if that tweet was directed at your boy, Champ Maul's mentality to want to kill anyone cheering against him, I think helps him thrive off being a crowd silencer when he plays games on the road. Murray would also say at the Nuggets parade that actions speak louder than words, and my actions to not give Denver enough love when they were the one seed for the entire season definitely spoke louder than my words after they beat the Lakers. While Murray has embraced every bit of the limelight after passionately shaming the non-believers, forming a friendship with multiple-time UFC featherweight champion Alex Volkanovsky, his fellow superstar went back to Serbia to get away from being the center of attention. To be fair, Jokic did get MVP chance while whitewater rafting and did also pull off this noteworthy flip. In addition to that clip, this one of Jokic yamming it on LeBron, and this one of sending Marcus Morris into the shadow realm shows you that anyone who says Jokic isn't a good athlete is just another hater. Regarding the team as a whole, and their approach organizationally, as this tweet reads, states, Calvin Booth's strategy in the draft and for Denver's two-way contracts was clear. Experienced NBA-ready players who don't have the highest upside but give a championship roster real depth. He's not trying to find the next Nikola Jokic, he's trying to find the next Bruce Brown slash Jeff Green. That's a great point. Green and Brown were both faltered in free agency, so the draft picks turned top five summer league scores in Hunter Tyson and Julian Strother may be tasked with stepping into a legit role for Coach Malone. Resigned veteran point guard Reggie Jackson will also have a bigger role. One youngin who will definitely have to step up is Peyton Watson. Not shying away from the spotlight that comes along with the NBA, I think the soon-to-be sophomore in Watson is more similar to Murray than he is to Jokic. The infamous Vic Lombardi asked Peyton if he saw Snoop wearing his jersey at a Denver concert. Watson would respond with, quote, We went to the same high school, he's always supported me, and he's a huge Laker fan, so for him to wear my jersey means a lot. End quote. Swatson has the capacity to morph into a top wing player for the Nuggets in 23-24. He showed real improvements in the Summer League. Meanwhile, another soon-to-be sophomore in the Game 3 of the final savior, Christian Brown, has an edge to his personality like Murray as well. Expect a massive leap from the product of Kansas in CB for Year 2. On the other hand, then there's the criminally under-talked about third and fourth options, Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr., who are more down-to-earth like the Joker. MPJ lets his play do the talking, aside from his recent interview with Taylor Rooks. In all seriousness, just like Jokic, Porter is humble off the court. Same thing goes for Contavious Caldwell-Pope and Jeff Green, who were in the same boat as Jokic. The roster balance in terms of aura is on point. In terms of the most highly touted incoming rookie, Julian Strother, and I think his flair for the dramatic and ego relates to Murray more so than it does to Jokic. Not to mention, Strother's perimeter scoring comfort in terms of his three-point shooting and ability to easily manufacture shots for himself by getting into the paint also relates to Murray. Julian definitely doesn't have anything close to Murray's mid-range game yet, but don't put it past the blue arrow to teach the kid a trick or two. To be fair, both Murray and Jokic are in a stratosphere of their own in terms of all-time Denver Nugget players. Each of the top six highest scoring playoff games in Denver Nuggets history belong to either Jamal or Nikola. Jokic, meanwhile, owns all five of the highest rebounding games in Nuggets playoff history. With all due respect to the decent amount of all-time greats for this Nuggets organization, whether in the 80s with Fat Lever, Dan Issel, and Alex English, in the 70s with David Thompson and Bobby Jones, in the 90s with Dikembe Mutombo, or in the 2000s with Carmelo Anthony and Marcus Camby, both Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray are the two most accomplished players in franchise history. History tells us that repeating as champs for these two organizational all-timers may not be as tough as people make it out to be. Six different teams winning the championship over the course of six years has never happened in NBA history. In fact, five different teams winning the championship in five years like it's happened over the last half decade with Toronto, LA, Milwaukee, Golden State, and Denver had only been done twice before this span throughout all of NBA history. Once from 1954 to 1958 with Minneapolis, Syracuse, Philadelphia, Boston, and St. Louis, and the other from 1975 to 1979 with Golden State, Boston, Portland, Washington, and Seattle. So parity in the NBA may be higher than ever before in the modern day, but Denver is undoubtedly in a great position to hang back-to-back -back banners at Ball Arena. 
There's plenty of more to cover surrounding the Denver Championship, so be sure to contribute to the content by posting your best, no pun intended, nuggets on Twitter or down below in the comments section to help your boy, and of course, you audience members, experience the dopest video possible. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.